In 2018, OCIMF MEG4 introduced new design factors for mooring lines and equipment selection. It's now followed by other organisations, such as Rightship, Intertanko and IMO. This animation explains how these factors are defined for the mooring system to work as a whole. The Ship Design MBL, or SDMBL, is the main parameter for mooring equipment selection and design. All other components are sized and designed within defined tolerances based on this core parameter. The mooring winches are selected and set up to meet certain parameters related to the SDMBL. The safe working load of the winch shall be equal to the SDMBL. The operation brake rendering point should be set to 60% of the SDMBL. Mooring hardware should have a safe working load that equates to the SDMBL. Mooring lines are chosen based on their Line Design Brake Force, or LDBF. It should be 100 to 105% of the SDMBL. During operation, the line's maximum recommended working load is 22% of the SDMBL, and the working load limit is 50% of the SDMBL. If the vessel is using tails, these are selected according to their Tail Design Brake Force, or TDBF. MEG4 recommends that TDBF should be equal to 125 to 130% of the SDMBL. Other guidelines, such as Rightship, have aligned with these recommendations. The strength of lines and tails will decrease over time due to wear and fatigue. Most regulations recommend retiring the ropes and tails once their residual strength reaches 75% of the ship design MBL. All these parameters are defined so the mooring arrangement functions as a system. The lines should be sufficiently strong to safely moor the vessel without damaging the hardware. The weakest point in the mooring system is the brake on the winch. It should render before any component reaches its maximum capacity, even when the capacity of the ropes and tails drops to 75% of the SDMBL. The working load limit of the ropes guarantees the max capacity would never be surpassed, even for a rope that's reached its retirement criteria. 